Next, we're going to discuss limits as x goes to positive infinity or as x goes to negative infinity. And we'll start with limits as x goes to positive infinity. Now, we saw in the previous video that we could use L'Hopital's rule to compute some limits as x goes to positive infinity. And all, yes, all of the limits we'll consider in this video, you can apply L'Hopital's rule to. And we'll see that for some of them. Um, but in general, this process will work better for some limits. Like, sorry, I guess that's not in general. Um, but we'll see examples where you might have to do like 20 applications of L'Hopital's rule or just one observation, as we'll see in the second one. Um, but first, we'll just recall again from the graph, as x goes to infinity, 1 over x goes to 0. And with limit laws, remember, rule 7 said you could raise functions to n. So 1 over x to the n, or well, all of 1 over x to the n is 1 to the n over x to the n, which is 1 over x to the n. 0 to the n is 0. So as x goes to infinity, 1 over x to the n is 0 for any n larger than 0. And also, for n larger than 0, as x goes to infinity, x to the n goes to infinity. You can see that um, like with a parabola or with a cube. As x goes to infinity, x to the n will go to infinity. And we're going to keep those in mind when computing some limits. Now first, limit as x goes to infinity, 2x squared plus 3 over 5x squared minus 4. You could, this is an infinity over infinity, a polynomial's behavior as x goes to infinity is determined by its leading term. So you get an infinity over infinity, or you could do this process. Um, you would apply L'Hopital's rule here twice. We look at the, the denominator. We're not going to apply L'Hopital's rule. We look at the denominator and find the largest exponent on the denominator, which is 2. We multiply everything by 1 over x squared. Because this is 2. If the largest exponent were 38, you'd multiply by 1 over x to 38 over 1 over x to 38. Notice we're multiplying by 1. So this does not change the question. This equals now limit as x goes to infinity of 2 plus 3 over x squared all over 5 minus 4 over x. So distribute that x squared into each thing. 2x squared over x squared is 2. 3 over x squared is 3 over x squared. 5x squared over x squared is 5. Negative 4x over x squared and x cancels, and you get negative 4 over x. Well, now what happens as x goes to infinity? Well, we can use the limit laws to do this piece by piece. So you get 2 plus 3 times 0 is 0, over 5 minus, well, I guess it's more up here, or n equals 1 down there, either way over 5 minus 0. And this equals 2 fifths. And if you use L'Hopital's rule, you would get that as well. You'd apply it twice. You'd get 4x plus 3 over 10x minus 4, and then you do it again. You'd get 4 over 10, fraction which reduces to 2 fifths. As x goes to infinity, 2 fifths goes to 2 fifths. What about this one? Negative, as x goes to infinity, negative 3x to the 29 plus 7x to the 24 plus 1 over 6x to the 29 plus 5x squared. Here we're going to consider um, fractions of functions. These are rational functions. Um, we'll consider rational functions and rational functions where we throw a square root on some things. Well, what do we do here? You could apply L'Hopital's rule 29 times. Or you could go through that process. Largest exponent on the bottom, 29. Not 1 over 29. 1 over x to the 29.
multiply, divide by 1 over x to the 29, and what do we get? Equals limit x to infinity negative 3 plus 7 over x to the 5 plus 1 over x to the 29. 7x to the 24 over x to the 29. 24 of those x's cancel, and you're left with 5x's down there. How about on the bottom? Well, it's 6 plus 5 over x to the 27. Those two of them cancel. And as x goes to infinity, we'll apply this three times, but we'll apply the uh, algebraic limit laws, and then apply that three times. We get negative 3 plus 0 plus 0 over 6 plus 0, which of course is negative 1 half. Um, with these, you do have to show work, unless you prove a result. Um, you might make an observation about coefficients and the answer. But I ask you these to see the work because seeing the work is important. The algebra is important. So if you want to generalize this process for rational functions, you have to show me a proof on a test. Um, for me to write the proof on a test, it would take probably three, four minutes. Um, and that's writing really quickly. I would hope for you on a test, it would take longer. So I would recommend going through this process or applying L'Hopital's rule if there are only a couple applications of it. Let's do two more. Another rational function, x goes to infinity, we get infinity over infinity. You can apply L'Hopital's rule here twice and arrive at your answer, or you can go through this process. Largest exponent on the bottom is 3. Divide everything by x cubed, and we get this limit. 3 over x minus 5 over x squared all over 4 plus 3 over x cubed. I was just making up numbers when I did this. I didn't realize we had exponents x to the 0, 1, 2, and 3. Um, and what do we get as x goes to infinity? Well, on top, you apply the algebraic limit laws and that. 0 minus 0 over 4 plus 0. A fraction which reduces to 0. Let's do one more like this before considering another example. Let's do this one. As x goes to infinity of this, here you'd have to apply L'Hopital's rule 1, 2, 5 times if you did it that way. Or follow the process again, and it will follow similarly to the previous three examples, but a little different. Large x on the bottom is 5. Divide everything by x to the fifth equals this limit now. What happens as x goes to infinity here? Well, I'm not going to fully substitute. Well, I'm not going to fully apply limit laws, I should say. And observations over there. I'm going to do it for some of it, but not for all of it. That 5x squared, I'm going to leave alone, because we know that that goes to infinity. What about the rest of this? Well, that 3 goes to 3. That goes to 0. The bottom goes to 3. That goes to 0. So this limit now equals this limit. How can we handle this limit? Well couple different ways. Um, debating in how much detail I want to do this. Uh, hmm. 
Well, let's do it informally and then formally. As x goes to infinity, x squared goes to infinity. So 5x squared goes to infinity. So adding 3 onto that doesn't change it. Dividing by that by 3 doesn't change it, and we get infinity. If this, if this were a negative here, it's still infinity. You take something which goes off to infinity and remove 3, it's still going to get larger than any number. Um, so that's the uh, short, not shortcut, but uh, less detailed version. If I wanted to do it in more detail, I'll just say here, more detail. Um, we would say that that equals, we'd reduce the fraction. Uh, to what? 5 thirds x squared plus 1. And what does this equal? Well, this equals using limit laws 5 thirds limit x to infinity x squared plus 1. Uh, plus 1 is outside the limit. So let's organize that a little better. As x goes to infinity, 1 goes to 1. And then, that would equal infinity. Um, either way, I, I'm okay with that first way. But if you wanted to see the more detail. Um, so we could take limits like this. What would happen if we threw a square root on something? Let's take one example like that. And I want to take a specific example, because we're going to use it for what we do next. Let's see. This one. Limit x to infinity 2x squared plus 5 with a square root all over 4 minus 3x. How would we do this? Well, we're again going to look at the denominator, largest exponent, and divide. But we'll see that simplification, because of that square root, is a little different. So let's do that. Largest exponent is 1. Divide everything by x, or multiply everything by 1 over x, equals limit x to infinity denominator. 4 over x minus 3. What about the numerator? 2 plus 5 over x squared, all under square root. Where did that come from? Well, what does the numerator say? It says 2x squared plus 5 times 1 over x. In other words, divide by x. How can we get that x into the square root? Well, we can't unless we throw a square root on it. We can't just throw a square root on something. That changes the question. We need this to simplify to 1 over x, or else we're no longer multiplying by 1. Square root and square invert each other. So the square root of x squared is x. And now, This equals 2x squared plus 5 over x squared, all under a square root. And then this fraction reduces to 2 plus 5 over x squared. Well, what about this limit now? Well, we can apply our limit laws and observations. This equals root 2 plus 0, all over 0 minus 3, not negative 2 over root 3 equals negative root 2 over 3. Well, well, that's great. We did limits to positive infinity. Let's consider limits as x goes to negative infinity. For limits as x goes to negative infinity, what we are going to do 
is turn it into a limit as x goes to positive infinity. Well, how can you do that? Well, remember, as x goes to negative infinity, um, you're looking at the behavior of the function as you go in the negative x direction. The limit to positive infinity looks at the behavior of the function in the positive x direction. Well, we didn't discuss exactly this graph transformation. We discussed a way of flipping something over the x-axis by using a transformation changing all y's into negative y's. But here, if we take all of these x values over here and throw negatives on them, that's going to flip the function over the y-axis and it's going to cause the behavior over in this direction to be captured then by behavior in that direction. So changing uh, this notation, this arrow with a bar, um, is a function notation in math. It says, well, you can just read it. At, well, it's, it's technically read x maps to negative x. Um, but you can think of this as take all x's and replace them with negative x's. And if you do that, and you want to see what happens over here, well, do that. It goes over and happens over there and is captured by the limit as x goes to positive infinity. Now, examples of this, um, any of the first four examples we did, you could go through this process. You're actually going to get the same exact limit. Um, so in the first one, you'd get, I forget the first one, uh, whatever the number, the same number is, but you apply this transformation. Now, that's not always necessarily true. Let's look at this one. This is the... Uh, Last example we did for positive infinity, but we had the limit as x goes to positive infinity. How would we handle it as x goes to negative infinity? Well, we're going to use this observation. So this first equal sign, we're going to not have enough space. This first equal sign, I'll write it down here, turns it into a limit as x goes to positive infinity. And what do we need to do to make that happen? We need to replace all x's with negative x's. Well, negative x squared is just x squared. So in the numerator, we still have 2x squared. Replace all x's in 5 with negative x, you still have a 5. But the denominator, notice you have 4. Replace x with a negative x, and you'll get 4 minus 3 times negative x minus 3 times negative x is positive 3x. So in this first step, we dealt with the negative infinity. Now we need to take the limit as x goes to positive infinity, which we can do using L'Hopital's rule if you want to deal with that square root, or following the same process as before. Largest exponent is 1. Divide everything by x, put that x in the square root by treating it as the square root of x squared. It's a limit as x goes to positive infinity over 4 over x plus 3. And what happens as x goes to positive infinity? Well, equals root 2 plus 0 over 0 plus 3 using limit laws and observations, which reduces to just root 2 over 3. Um, so if you did this first step and then, uh, or in any of those previous, or any of the first four limits we did, you would wind up getting the same limit in the end. But with this example, um, it is a different limit. It differs by a sign. And that happens sometimes depending on, I mean, depending on positive or negative degrees and where the square root is. Um, but why do we want limits as x goes to infinity? Well. Let's consider what they look like in a graph. If the limit as x goes to infinity is infinity or negative infinity, it tells us a little, but not too much. If the limit is a number in either direct, one or either one or both directions, then it does have a visual uh, interpretation. And we'll call that this definition, horizontal asymptote. If limit as x goes to infinity of f of x equals L1, and limit as x goes to negative infinity of f of x is L2, then we say f has horizontal asymptotes, y equals L1, 
and y equals L2. And just a, as an example illustrating that, this function 1 over 1 plus e to the negative x has horizontal asymptotes y equals 0 and y equals 1. Um, and you can actually compute that using the graph of e to the x. Um, but um, I'll just give you the graph of this function. Um, the graph looks like this. And you can see as x goes to infinity, this function approaches this uh, dotted line, or a dashed line, at 1. As x goes to negative infinity, it approaches 0. Um, so horizontal asymptotes do have a graphical interpretation. Um, we won't really use the graphical interpretation. Um, in our graphing section, we'll, we won't graph functions with asymptotes, but you could. And I will post some examples on Canvas. Um, so let's do this example. Find the vertical and horizontal asymptotes of this function. Well, we haven't talked about vertical asymptotes yet. Um, so let's make a remark on them in a moment. Uh, let's do the horizontal asymptotes first. Horizontal asymptotes. We need the limit as that goes to infinity. We already did that work. So from, I believe it was identically the two previous examples. Oh no, I guess that was an example. So from uh, previous work, the fifth and sixth limits we did, and um, I'm actually not sure if this is going to be a separate video or attached to the previous one. I have to decide that uh, in a moment. But from two of the last three examples we did, we know that y equals root 2 over 3 and y equals negative root 2 over 3 are the horizontal asymptotes. Um, and you would have to show that work if you didn't already show that work. Um, what about vertical asymptotes? Well, we actually already did the vertical asymptotes, but we didn't call them that. Case 4 of uh, algebraic limit. computations covered, without saying it, vertical asymptotes. And how did it cover it? Well, the limits we found approached an x value. And what we did was we looked at both sides. And in each case, we had something like an infinity and a negative infinity, or an infinity and a positive infinity. In either case, that is a vertical asymptote. And where did they occur? Well, they occurred where the denominator equaled 0. So all we have to do to find the actual equations for these is set denominator equal to 0 for a fraction. In that 1 over 1 plus e to the negative x, the denominator was never 0, and uh, the graph did not have a uh, vertical asymptote, D-E-N-O-M-I-N-A-T-O-R. Set denominator equal to 0 and solve. So we have 4 minus 3x equals 0, 3x equals 4, x equals 4 thirds. And a vertical line is given by the equation x equals a number. So I'll say x equals 4 thirds is the vertical asymptote. There's one in this case. Notice there were two horizontal asymptotes, but there's only one vertical asymptote. Uh, let's do one more. And in this one, I won't allude to previous works, previous work. Uh, we will just go through it and see what we get. What do I have? 2x squared plus 3 2x squared plus 3 over 5x squared minus 4x. Um, we actually did do part of this one, but I'm not going to reference that work for this. I'll do it the other way. Find the vertical and horizontal asymptotes. Well, uh, let's find vertical first, because they require less work. 
vertical asymptotes. I might have put a period after the S and H, A, S in the preview. There shouldn't be a period after that. Vertical asymptotes set the denominator equal to zero and solve. Well, x, x, background and x. The product is zero, so one of them has to be zero with real numbers. Add four, divide by five. And we get two vertical asymptotes. How about the horizontal asymptotes? Well, we need to take two limits. So let's take two limits. Let's start taking two limits by taking one limit. Sorry, my floor is loud. Old house. Well, I mean, medium old, I guess. Built from, what, 46 to 49, I believe. I think it was 45 to 40. It was three years across three. Well, I guess that hits four years. Um, took about three. I didn't build it. 1946-49. Uh, uh, horizontal asymptotes. Well, we need this limit. Um, we already did this limit uh, by dividing by x squared. I'm going to show you how it would look with L'Hopital's rule. So equals with L'Hopital's rule. This is an infinity over infinity. Because we have a limit as x goes to infinity, we can apply L'Hopital's rule if we get an infinity over infinity, or a negative of that, or 0 over 0. So we get, what, 4x plus 3. No, we don't. We be careful. 4x over 10 x plus 4. Jeez, minus 4. And you might be tempted to reduce that by 2 since everything has a 2 on it, but with low patals, you don't really have to worry about that. Um, but notice, we again get an infinity over infinity. So we can apply low patals rule again. Limit as x goes to infinity of 4 over 10. Why does that equal 2 fifths? Well, you couldn't use algebraic limit law, I assume it's 1. Yeah, it's 1. Um, or you could uh, reduce the fraction, and then that equals 2 fifths. I like reducing it before taking the limit. Um, I don't really know why. Uh, Yeah, I, I really don't know why. There's no reason to do that. I could have just said equals four times equals two fifths, or just equals two fifths. Um, so we found one horizontal asymptote. Well, we also have to take the limit as x goes to negative infinity. Two x squared plus three over five x squared minus four x. You could apply L'Hopital's rule. I'm not going to in this case. I'm going to do it the other way. By first. turning it into a limit as x goes to positive infinity. Limit, remember, to do that, we replace all x's with negative x's. So uh, negative x squared is x squared. Negative x squared is x squared. Negative 4 and negative x make a positive 4x. And here you can apply L'Hopital's rule. I'm not going to because I find this other way it takes less writing, I think. I might be wrong about that. Large exponent on the bottom is 2. Divide everything by x squared. So you get 2 plus 3 over x squared over 5 plus 4 over x. And what does this equal? 2 plus 0 over 5 plus 0 equals 2 fifths. I probably shouldn't box those because that's not the actual answer. Now from this, we had the limit in the positive and negative directions were both the same. So that tells us y equals 2 fifths, a horizontal line, is the uh, horizontal asymptote.
So for a horizontal asymptote, the two limits could be the same. And if they are, there's only one asymptote. They could be different, as in the previous example, then you get two horizontal asymptotes.